Another developing story on Capitol Hill. The Senate set to take up a slim COVID-19 relief bill next week. And it comes amid clashing messages from the president and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Joining us now with more on the negotiations, Washington Post senior editor Mark Fisher. There seems, Mark, to be a divide here uh, within the administration, within the Republican Party. Tell us where you see things as they stand right now. Well, if you think about this as a uh, kind of a spectrum, uh, at one end you have Donald Trump, uh, of all people, saying that this should be a huge package with a tremendous amount of support for American workers who have been uh, basically put out of work by the coronavirus epidemic. Uh, then you have the House Democrats, who had previously been the folks asking for the most money uh, and uh, who had been shut down by that same president who now wants the giant package. The president tweeted earlier today, go big or go home. But earlier, he said that he was shutting down the negotiations entirely. So you've got the president, then the House Democrats, then the president again saying uh, he wanted a small package or none at all. Then you have his, his own administration, his uh, Treasury Secretary, saying he wants a small uh, help package. And then finally, you have the Senate Republicans who are saying, hey, this is just too much spending. We can't do anything large at this time. Let's just do the minimum to get by. Uh, the bottom line, probably nothing will happen before the election. It's very confusing. Mm -hmm. House Speaker Pelosi talking on CNN this afternoon, kind of getting a, a back and forth with uh, the commentator at the time. She says the package that's being presented to them is not enough. It's not going to help folks. Right. And so she's saying that this has to be something that is going to really get people back on their feet, both workers and some of the big businesses. The airlines are now talking about uh, laying off or, or permanently uh, ending the jobs for tens of thousands of workers. Uh, obviously, the hospitality industry is, uh, is laid low. Uh, and so a lot of these companies that had been sort of just hanging on over these last six, seven months because of that first care package back in the spring, that money has run dry. And so a lot of companies, uh, a lot of employers are saying they've reached the end of the line. They're going to have to lay people off. Mark, let's drill down a little bit more on this, uh, this statement from the president, go big or go home. Um, critics there arguing that, well, the president, of course, would like to have uh, to be able to say he's delivering a big package to Americans when they need it most in time um, for Election Day. Do you think that that is what is driving a little of what we're hearing from the president that's creating this sort of discord uh, among his own party? It certainly seems to be, and it's not just discord among his own party, it's a discord against his own previous statements, because it was just a couple of weeks ago that the president uh, pulled the plug on the negotiations between uh, Mnuchin and Pelosi and said, uh, we're not going to do anything. Then uh, that didn't play well in the polls. The president has continued to fall uh, farther behind uh, Joe Biden in many polls. And so uh, one of the things that people are holding against him is the idea that uh, there has not been progress made either to curb the spread of the coronavirus or to ameliorate its impact on the economy. And so now we have that same president turning around mere days later saying he wants not the smallest or, or or no package, but the biggest possible package. Uh, so the heads are spinning both among House Democrats and Senate Republicans. And Senate, Senator McConnell is being criticized by his um, opponent, Amy McGrath, tonight, saying that they're, instead of working on a, a COVID relief package, they're trying to jam in a new uh, Supreme Court nominee. Right. And you heard a lot of that in today's hearing uh, for Amy Comey. Barrett. <laughs> Barrett, excuse me. Uh, okay. Where a number of the senators were saying that indeed, as, as, uh, as has become the issue in the Kentucky Senate race, uh, that this is a political ploy and that the uh, that Congress has better things to be paying attention to, namely uh, getting American workers back uh, either working or at least uh, having their basic expenses taken care of during this temporary crisis. And, uh, and instead, they've, uh, they're busy putting all their energies into getting the Supreme Court justice in place uh, before for the election because the president wants her uh, to be supportive of him uh, should there be any conflict after the uh, vote is counted. Doesn't sound like the Senate is going to be going big. So let's look at this piecemeal as we uh, get ready to wrap things up here, Mark. Um, where do you think uh, will, this will all be finished when all is said and done in the next few weeks? 
much? Well, it's hard to imagine uh, them coming to a, a significant deal in just the month remaining before the election, uh, less than a month. And, uh, but after that, things should ease up. Whichever way the election goes, uh, it, it would seem that the political imperative here and the political barriers will, to some extent, disappear. And there may be some relief for some of these key industries uh, that are really at the, at the foundation of the American economy. All right. Washington Post Senior Editor Mark Fisher, thanks for your insight tonight. Great to chat with you. Thank you. Okay. Well,